the parliament. The finance minister. Price of goods and services. The people. A lot has happened during the past 24 hours. Prices of essential goods and services have increased exponentially. As never before seen in the history of Sri Lanka. Good evening and welcome. This is Prime Time News on TV1. We've got details of the current situation in the country and also views expressed by various political parties and powers that be on the future course of action to remedy the crisis that we are facing here in Sri Lanka. Let's start off with a look at your top stories for tonight. News first, headlines, main sponsor. Valuable Finance, best finance company. The flexibility of the exchange rate leads to several price hikes. A 29% increase in the price of medicine, 35 rupee increase in the price of wheat flour, bread increased by 30 rupees, rice packet price increased by 20 rupees. Central Bank says the situation is temporary, believes the market will recover. Suspicion regarding the rupee depreciation, a revelation by Anurag Kumara Disanayaka. Why isn't the Finance Minister in Parliament? Finance Minister visits court for the Malvana case. Long queues for gas and fuel seen across the country today as well. News first, headlines, main sponsor. Valuable Finance, best finance company. Taking a look at those stories now in detail, the selling rate of the rupee against the US dollar stood at 260 today. When the central bank made the decision to float the exchange rate last Monday or today, the value of the rupee was 202 rupees. The depreciation of 58 rupees has impacted many industries in the country today. Wheat flour. Prima said that one kilogram of wheat flour was increased by a price between 35 to 45 rupees. The Serendib company too increased wheat flour prices by 35 rupees. The All Ceylon Bakery Owners Association said today that a loaf of bread must be increased by 30 rupees owing to the price hike in wheat flour. Accordingly, the new price of a loaf of bread will be between 110 and 130 rupees. Not even 10% of the bakers use wood-fired ovens. 90% of them use stoves that need fuel like diesel, gas and kerosene. This is the biggest increase in the prices of bread in Sri Lankan history. The amount we added to the final price is justifiable compared to the price increases they imposed. However, it is the consumers who are suffering. We believe the prices of buns and the short eats will increase by 10 rupees. The All Ceylon Restaurant Owners Association has said that the prices of rice packets, kottu and short eats will be increased from today. The price of a rice packet will go up by 20 rupees, kottu by 10 rupees and the price of short eats will be increased by 5 rupees.
Rupiah Dahatune Bittere, Rupiah Visi Haya. Rupiah. The egg that cost 13 rupees is now sold at 26 rupees. A kilogram of chicken, which was 450 rupees, is now sold between 780 rupees to 810 rupees. A kilogram of chili flakes that was 600 rupees now costs 1200 rupees. Prices of salt packets have increased. Coconut oil, which used to cost 240 rupees, now costs 570 rupees. With the price hike of these products, the cost incurred by the restaurants in the industry in producing food will increase, which will increase the final selling price. The entire food and bakery industry has collapsed. Medicine. The Medicine Price Control Committee had approved to increase the prices of medicine. State Minister Professor Channa Jayasumana told News First that the prices of medicine will be increased by 29%. Importers have informed us that the private sector has medicine stocks sufficient for four months. We have stocks of medicine required by the state sector sufficient for six months. Therefore, there is no chance for a shortage of medicines to emerge in the country. The Price Control Committee headed by Palita Abekon has informed us that they have approved to increase the prices of medicine by 29%. Meanwhile, the all salon three-wheel drivers trade union has decided to increase the fare for the first kilometer to 80 rupees. I kindly request all three-wheel drivers to charge whatever amount you wish. As we proposed earlier, if we are to move forward while protecting the passengers, we must increase the fare for the first kilometer to 80 rupees. We have to name the price of the second kilometer as 50 rupees. Airline ticket prices. Sri Lanka Civil Aviation Authority said the price of an air ticket has increased by 27%. Fuel. The Lanka IOC made the most significant increase in fuel prices in the history of Sri Lanka. Lanka IOC increased petrol and diesel prices by 50 and 75 rupees with effect from midnight yesterday. Accordingly, the new price of a litre of octane 95 petrol at Lanka IOC filling stations is 254 rupees. The new price of a litre of Euro 3 petrol is 263 rupees. A litre of auto diesel that was previously sold at 139 rupees is now 214 rupees. The new price of a litre of super diesel that was previously sold at 174 rupees is now 249 rupees. The Ceylon Petroleum Corporation has not decided to increase prices of fuel yet. The CPC sells a litre of octane 92 petrol at 177 rupees while a litre of octane 95 petrol is sold at 207 rupees. A litre of auto diesel is sold at 121 rupees while a litre of super diesel is sold at 159 rupees. With Lanka IOC increasing the prices of petrol and diesel, people were seen standing in long queues to purchase fuel at Sipetko filling stations. Long queues were seen at the Sipetko filling station in Kolpiti since this morning. Litro Gas said that 120,000 gas cylinders were supplied to the market today. Litro Gas said steps have been taken to distribute gas cylinders as usual after the issues over the opening of letters of credit were resolved. However, people were affected by the shortage of gas today as well. <laughs> We aren't asking the government for money. It has been five days since my restaurant was shut down. Meanwhile, the central bank says that the temporary fluctuations in the economy will recover and the markets will stabilize soon.
By allowing the value of the rupee to float, the rupee could depreciate, but there could be favorable outcomes as well. This could lead to an increase in the foreign reserves, which will contribute to the development of certain other aspects of the country. Considering that the central bank is ready to react to the drawbacks we could face owing to this situation. We will experience a turbulent nature in the future. Therefore, we expect the market to perform well and stabilize the exchange rate in the market. Moreover, we request all factions, especially the banks, to work closely and cooperatively with the central bank at this point. Meanwhile, India is preparing to assist Sri Lanka to address the fuel crisis in the country. India is preparing to grant a 500 million US dollar loan from the Exim Bank of India. The bank approved this loan in favor of Sri Lanka yesterday. The first stock of fuel purchased under this credit line is due to be brought to the country by the 15th of this month. According to the Indian Exim Bank, 75% of the credit line should be used to purchase fuel from India. The remaining 25% of the credit line can be used to purchase fuel from a third party. Meanwhile, the Indian Exim Bank has said that the time period granted to repay the loan cannot exceed 12 months. India granted this loan to Sri Lanka against a backdrop where Sri Lanka had already been given a credit line of 500 million US dollars for the import of essential goods and where Sri Lanka had requested for more time to repay the interest of another 400 million US dollar loan from India. Sri Lanka is also holding discussions with India to secure another credit line of 1 billion US dollars for the purchase of medicine and essential goods. Finance Minister Basil Rajapaksa is due to travel to India for discussions on this matter during the coming weeks. Meanwhile, it was recently reported that India has imposed strict conditions to be fulfilled to approve the 1 billion US dollar credit line. The conditions imposed by India include calls for Sri Lanka to present a long-term plan on solving its forex and debt repayment crisis, a string of maritime security agreements that will strengthen India's strategic interests, particularly around the eastern Trincomalee Harbour, entering into a renewable energy project in Sampur and the Delft Islands, and the reopening of the Palali Airport for commercial operations. Preparations to sign an agreement for a renewable energy project in Sampur Trincomalee with India comes amidst such a backdrop. The agreement will be entered into between Sri Lanka and the Thermal Power Cooperation Limited or NTPC of India, a state-owned enterprise. A majority of the stake of the Trincomalee oil tanks are now owned by a joint venture with India. After a prolonged fuel shortage in the country, the supply of fuel from the 15th of this month will also fall into the hands of India. Now, strategically important plots of land in Sampur are being awarded to India for a power project. A terminal at the Colombo port has already been given away to the Indian Avani Group. The majority stake of the southern terminal of the Colombo port is owned by China. Steps were taken to pass separate acts for the governance of the Chinese-built Port City project. China enjoys a majority stake in the Hambantota port as well. While the people are suffering at the hands of crisis after crisis, they are also losing power and possession of Sri Lanka's national assets. <laughs> This was not caused by negligence. This is not a coincidence. This is definitely part of a plan. On the one hand, the geopolitical needs, and on the other, the needs of corrupt politicians. The phase that we are passing through right now is a result of this plan. This crisis was a part of a plan, and they needed to create this crisis to further their goals. PB Jaisundara is a person who has handled our economy for more than five decades. Even Minister Bandulugunawardhana has experience of more than 20 years in this field. 
Ajit Nivad Khabra too has experience of more than 20 years in these fields. Don't these people know that there are many economic experts who have excelled in this field within our university sector and even in the central bank. They made arrangements to allow government agents within districts to give out lands for investment projects. Then they removed the farmers from these fertile lands. Then they allowed the crisis to evolve and they even created a crisis in sectors including gas, milk powder, fuel and many other vital sectors in the country. In the meantime, if you notice carefully, you can observe that there is a new trend being formed within the country. New cement and tire factories were opened recently. Then there is a proposal to build a steel factory as well. Similarly, companies like New Fortress through Yugadanavi started getting involved in the fuel and gas trades. On one hand, they have created an atmosphere that allows countries like the United States and India to play their geopolitical games. And in the meantime, they are creating a business monopoly within the country. Even though we speak of the New Fortress deal, are we aware of the main shareholders of this company? Similarly, are we aware of who is in investing in the proposed steel company. The people do not know about these. Once this business monopoly is created within the country, the switch will be in their hands. Maybe the things that are being brought through the IOC is not really from India. The Minister of Finance is the main actor in this and also the creator of all these crises. Speaking in Parliament today, the opposition faction demanded that the finance minister make a statement regarding the prevailing economic situation in the country. Parliament has authority over finances. We looked into the whereabouts of the finance minister yesterday. He came in the afternoon. There is no point in him coming to Parliament if he is not speaking. He must speak about the prevailing situation. There is no use of him coming without making a speech. The price of petrol has risen to 200 to 300 rupees. Mr. Speaker, you must tell him to speak of this problem immediately. Today, the price of a litre of petrol and diesel has increased to 300 rupees. When the camera doesn't show him, this is the basic responsibility of the finance minister. I believe as a senior minister, Chamal Rajapaksha would agree with us. Mr. Speaker, the prime responsibility of the finance minister is to present facts to parliament regarding the prevailing situation. We don't want his mere presence in parliament. As a responsible minister, he must present facts to the parliament. Just because three of his brothers are functioning as the president, prime minister and as a minister, he cannot evade his responsibilities. That mentality can only only be in their homes. Can the younger brother act irresponsibly if his elder brothers are senior officials? You cannot behave like that in Parliament. Mr. Speaker, you must at least issue an order to the Finance Minister to make a statement to Parliament. Even you must be aware. When you return to your electorate in Baligama, voters will come and ask you what is happening. What will you do? You will have to tell them that they must ask Basil Rajapaksha that question. If there is a news article published regarding an incident involving the police somewhere, Minister Sarat Virasekara clarifies to the parliament. When the media reported the garlic scam, Minister Bandula Gunawardana presented a report to Parliament. He must clarify matters regarding the electricity outages, rise in prices and the fuel shortage and the rise in the price of one kilogram of milk powder to 300 rupees. We allowed a debate for five hours yesterday regarding the fuel crisis. If you need a discussion, as the Speaker mentioned, request a debate without beating around the bush. We will give you the debate. A Speaker of the House does not have the power to call a Minister to the Parliament. A Speaker has never done that before. When the 20th Amendment was passed in Parliament, I displayed the American flag warning of the dangers of this country being betrayed to America. I said this is being done by an American. They said a person with seven brains came into power, but now we can say that he has no brains. You and I both know of the global financial status. Therefore, the President requests you all to work with us in gaining the relevant benefits. There is no point in talking against us.
garu dinas gulu baru dan amat itu mahu visiing kalau ada perkasa mudah lama tu mahu villa kerana ini permainan kita mati itu naik laut. Meanwhile, Finance Minister Basil Rajapaksa was present at the Gampa High Court this morning. The minister was present at the High Court today to appear for the case concerning the land in Malwana. कोई दिन में काक क्या नो बोलते काक के नॉन में आई यूक्रेन रूसिया नो युद्ध आते हैं इल्ल दिया ना निशान देना पे उत्साह मुत्साह एक मगर नो जनता के ना तो बुधवार के विश्वासी हिंद में की कुनी लड़ी की था विश्वासी हमें दिया के ना अभी मंडप आप यहाँ में तो बोलो ये जनादिपति तुम्� वो मत एक आप ही कर पेगा नहीं सरकार इंदला कर पेगा कभी ताव का आलिवा नातर नातर करेंगे नहीं टिया ना मुझ नातर करेंगे ना बेरी तार मट्टे उग्र होना तो जब मैं एक एक डॉलर रात तेरे नहीं कर ले बेरी इतनी कोई मुझे विश्वास नहीं किया ओ ये दिन नॉन ये मैं किया किया नहीं करती है विपक्ष ये मैं क्यों आई थी आप ही एक आते हैं उनका नहीं पे ओ तुम्हारे विपक्ष ये तो मैं हूँ कल नहीं जा मैं जाती हूँ आर्थिक विषय जो उनका पालक रहेगा बच्चे � मैं वो कम बाहर करनु आप इधर तेर सिद्ध है नहीं वाने में बाहर करनु वाले टा आप इधर जातियां तरह आप इधर तरह बाले बाले आप नहीं ना मुझ देशीय वाशे इंडिया नहीं वाह आप अनिवार्य मिशन देना आप इधर तेर डॉलर अरबों दे टा मुकदेवे नहीं इस तरह नाइके वागने मुकदेवा कर Three witnesses taking the stand on the Malwana land dispute testified to the High Court today that they were threatened by the FCID police officers before recording their statements. The case was then postponed to the 25th of this month and summons were also issued to seven other witnesses to the case. Meanwhile, the Janata Vimukti Perumana also convened a media briefing today. Can you remember the time they passed an act to launder black money? The act only allows to launder money for six months. This period ends on the 31st of this month. If it is so, there are only 20 more days for it to expire. Now we have a serious concern as to whether the dollar was allowed to float to bring back their hidden wealth and to launder it using this act. Now if they bring 100 million dollars, they can get 6 billion rupees. I don't think even a major corporate company can earn that profit within a year, but they can earn it within a day. Even in the past, they carried out these corrupt businesses. They tried to hold the dollar at 203 rupees, but the value of a dollar in the market went to 250 rupees. Some export companies converted their dollar incomes from the open market at 250 rupees. I think they were able to earn a bigger profit through selling these dollars, something more than their trade income. And when these companies went to import raw materials for their exports, Basil Rajapaksha, as the finance minister, instructed the banks to honor their letters of credit. They have open letters of credit for these businessmen at 203 rupees for a dollar and then these businessmen converted their dollar income at 250 rupees. Some businessmen earned billions from these conversions. They allowed these black market practices to grow within our economy. Now we have a serious concern as to whether the dollar was allowed to float to bring back their hidden wealth and to launder it using this act which is supposed to expire by the end of this month. News constant reporting about the economic condition of the country. Most of these authorities tried to show that the main downfall of the economy was because of the COVID-19 pandemic. But was it really the COVID-19 pandemic? Confirming the theories put forward by News First, Veritary Research has done a study on reforms for a sustainable recovery. Now in this research document, Veritary Research speaks about the tax revenue as a percentage of the GDP. Do you remember in 2019 uh, the newly appointed government at the time uh, introduced a lot of tax cuts they said do not pay these these and these particular taxes we've got you and this was a percentage that was in 2019 this is the tax revenue as a percentage of the gross domestic product now this was a story in 2019 what has happened in 2021 the tax revenue 
as a percentage of the GDP has drastically gone down to 8%. Because of the tax concessions that was introduced back in 2019, this is the situation right now. The interesting point is only six countries in the world have less than 8% and um, Sri Lanka is now one of those six countries. Now when the revenue of the government goes down, now if the government isn't earning money as much as it did before, doesn't necessarily mean that the expenditure also goes down. Although the revenue was on a declining trend, the expenditure of course was rising. What do you do when you don't have enough money to finance whatever that you have to finance? You tend to take loans. So what you see right here is the increase in public debt to GDP ratio. In 2019 we had a percentage of 95.5%. This is the public debt in comparison to the GDP. The 95.5% percentage went up to 119.4% showing an increase of 24% from 2019 to 2021. Now when you take loans and you can't pay the loans it's the same thing that happens to your crib they downgrade you they tell you can't take any more loans because you're not in a position to pay them this is exactly what happened to Sri Lanka as well when these credit rating agencies declared that Sri Lanka was not in a position to service its debt anymore uh, we were when it comes to this credit rating we were in uh, 2016 in a BB minus position and somewhere down the line when it came to October 2020 we were in B minus and right now December 2021 we have gone down to CC uh, credit rating this means that you are not in a position to service your debt anymore the bigger picture between 2010 and 2018 was that uh, the sovereign foreign debt repayment that Sri Lanka had to repay between 2010 and 18 was at 2.2 billion US dollars. What is the bigger picture now? It has now gone up to 4.4 billion US dollars where Sri Lanka has to pay this much of US dollars as debt repayment between 2021 to 2025. Official reserves are what a country has on standby when it wants to make certain payments. Now uh, by the year 2016 we had a reserve position of 8 billion US dollars. Now we were here in terms of reserves in 2016. Where are we now? In 2020 our reserve position is right here at 2 billion US dollars. From 8 billion in 2016 we have gone down to 2 billion in 2020 recording a downfall of this. What was the reason behind the reserves going down like this? Mainly because the government or the monetary authorities were of the stance that we will settle our debt no matter what comes our way. They said we made a recent payment of US, uh, 500 million US dollars as uh, sovereign uh, bonds and we will continue to settle our debt. But how are we settling our debt? How are we financing our debt? We are using our reserves to finance our debt and this is what it has come to now. Uh, do you remember how uh, certain uh, ministers and MPs were constantly going on about the fact that COVID-19 was the reason behind, was the main reason behind the economic downfall of the country? But was it really though? Why do we call COVID-19 a pandemic and not an epidemic? It's because pandemic affects the entire world. If the entire world has gone down, then it is understandable that Sri Lanka with the rest of the other countries have gone down. But have the other countries gone down? Let's take a look. This is the change in gross official reserves from 2019 to 2021. Now in this particular slide, Verity research clearly shows that the pandemic was not the key driver of the reserves depletion in the country because India managed to increase its uh, reserves by 39%. If you check Bangladesh, the Bangladesh, the country that helps us, has increased its uh, reserves by 41%. Bhutan by 35%. Even Maldives, reserves have gone up by 5%. If you take a look at Pakistan, 33%. Countries like Nepal, Malaysia, Thailand, Indonesia and even Philippines have somehow managed to increase the reserves that they have in the country despite the challenges posed by the pandemic. 
what has Sri Lanka done and where is Sri Lanka right now in terms of its official reserves. Sri Lanka is the only country in the region that has gone down by 79 percent our reserve position in the country has declined from 2019 to 2021 has gone down by 79 percent when other countries like india bangladesh bhutan and even Maldives and philippines have recorded an increase in their official reserves so is covid 19 pandemic actually the key indicator behind as to why the sri lankan economy has gone down Verity Research speaks about the road ahead. Which option do we take? We have three options. We are right now in the junction and we have three options to make. Let's consider option number one. Option number one is a third party bailout. Third party bailout is where you approach a third party and be like, help me, I need help and I take temporary assistance from a third party and ensure that whatever that uh, the first prioritized uh, problem is solved then and there. That is a third party bailout but you can't for certain tell for how long the third parties will keep on assisting you in facing the economic crisis in your country. Second option is this particular option. This is the disorderly default. This is when the government can't make the payments anymore. This is when the government can't pay back the money that it has taken from the rest of the other countries and that is why it caused called a disorderly default. Government fails to make a capital or coupon payment without prior negotiation. We don't plan it, we don't tell them, we eventually are unable to make that payment and that is what you call the disorderly default and that is the second option. The second option and this is the red flag. What is this green flag right here? If you go on this direction, you see the option called debt restructuring. That is the orderly default. This is disorderly and this is orderly. Orderly default is where you make proactive decision and be like, I want to make a negotiation with you. I will not be able to make this debt repayment because of that. Give me some time. I will buy some time, earn some more money and then make the payment back to you. That is what Verity Research has shown in the green flag right here showing this is the ideal option that the country which is in a junction right now could take. They have already mentioned that this creates liquidity and will necessarily be accompanied by an IMF program. That is also an option but the most ideal situation and the most ideal option that Sri Lanka has to take right now is to go for de debt restructuring where you negotiate prior with a third party and inform as to how long you need to make that debt repayment. Now what I explained to you all this time was the current economic situation of the country, the ground level, the reality when it comes to the economy of our country. If necessary actions or correct decisions or proactive measures are not taken, the declining situation of the economy will uh, worsen further. However, if correct decisions are made by putting the interests of the people before and taken for the benefit of the people, we will be eventually able to find a solution to the economic crisis that we have in the country right now. A silent protest was held in Kohula for the 11th consecutive day today. The protesters are opposing the electricity, gas, fuel and dollar crisis in the country. The protesters held candles at the Kohula junction as they staged the silent protest. People need to take necessary steps to let the government know that we will not uh, stay still and let them do whatever they want to do. Enough is enough. That's why we have got on the streets. We really don't know where we are heading. It's very sad. They are still claiming that this country has not fallen into bankruptcy. If this is not bankruptcy, please explain to us what it is. Vessels carrying fuel and other essential items are roaming around our seas waiting for us to pay for the goods. We don't have money to pay for these vessels. There is no way to release essential items from the port. We cannot open letters of credit. There are no dollars within the country. Isn't this bankruptcy? People are finding it really difficult to even survive today. But what are they doing? They are not doing anything. If you don't know what to do and if you are unable to do it, get out and allow someone competent to run this country.
Reuters reported that Sri Lanka will begin talks with the International Monetary Fund next month on a plan to help the country, including assistance with debt restructuring and managing its foreign exchange shortage. Quoting three sources with knowledge of the ongoing discussions, told Reuters that Finance Minister Basil Rajapaksa will travel to Washington, D.C. in mid-April to present Sri Lanka's proposal to senior IMF officials. The move to approach the IMF for help comes after months of resistance from Sri Lanka's government and central bank despite calls from opposition leaders and experts to seek a bailout package water is life and clean water is good health gum had the launched yet another project in rural Sri Lanka to provide people with much needed clean drinking water this project was launched in Sella Kataragama water a freely available necessity for some but a luxury that is out of reach for others this is the village of Kohumbadigana in Sella Kataragama to the 500 families that live here water does not come easy Gummadda intervened and initiated a project to provide clean drinking water to the residents of this village. The Sri Lanka Navy provided technical support for this project. This project that will benefit over 500 families was made possible by the kind support of Kanti Vetamuni and Kumuduni de Soiza Abesiri Wardana in memory of the late Mr. and Mrs. Felix R. de Silva Soiza. Over 550 families will benefit from this project. At this moment, I would like to call to memory our parents, the former chairman of the Stafford Group of Companies, late Mr. and Mrs. Felix R. de Silva Soisa. We hope that the people in this village and their children will be able to access safe and healthy water through this project. Gummadda will continue to press on with the people for the people. President Gotabe Rajapaksa today inspected an important institution in the country. We'll bring you the details after this short commercial break. Valuable Finance, best finance company. Register today for a Zoom workshop on new technology in Singhala. Win the world with innovations. On the 24th of March at 3 p.m. Register by 0777-600-20. Organized by Slit Institute. Tech Bus. Main sponsor. Slit Knowledge University. Challenging convention and redefining education. Welcome back to the news. President Gota Berajapaksa are engaged in an inspection tour at the Foreign Employment Bureau today. The President, during his visit, also inquired on the progress made with the national program to direct trained professionals to foreign employment opportunities. The president also inquired on the steps taken in resolving the workplace harassment faced by employees and on safety of these expatriates. Opposition leader Sajid Premadasa today addressed the media. Here is what he had to say. Opposition leader Sajid Premadasa was bestowed the Sasana Kirti Deshabhimani Sri Lanka Janaraja honorary title today. He was bestowed the title by the chief prelate of the Sri Lanka Ramanya sect, Most Venerable Makulave Sri Vimalatero. The event was held at the headquarters of the Ramanya sect. 
సన్నస్ పాత్రయ విపక్ష నాయకత్వం అంట ప్రధానీ కర్ణ మోహత The title was given honoring the social traditional and religious services rendered by the opposition leader Deshapalaka nitaram hitanne ilanga mati varane gana nayakaya hitanne ilanga politicians always think about the next election a leader thinks about the next generation and the future politicians are not liked by many we are expecting a lack of leadership we need a leader that thinks about the future by presenting these honorary titles we are expecting good leaders for the future of the country honest leaders paadi pirinamima magin balaporuttu wenne ratata anagata nayakayan dharmanukula nayakayan Several dignitaries including the former president Maitri Pala Sirisena, former speaker Karu Jayasurya and chief theory of the Sri Lanka Ramani sect were present at the event. Buddhime manava sampata nirvaradiva kalmanakarane nukirima. Due to mismanagement of human resources and under appreciating the human resource have led to intellectuals migrating. One of our main objectives is to create a program to bring these people back by appreciating them. There is no point in acting aggressively. The condition in which the state that once was self sufficient in South Asia is sad now may the triple gem bless us in our efforts to revive the country we know that that blessing will be bestowed upon us apata tunuruwan ge aashirwadaya thawamat no aduwa labena em aashirwadaya me aakaren no aduwa apa siru dena weta labena bawa api danna Meanwhile members of the Samagichana Balavegia visited the Velikada prison today to meet former parliamentarian Ranjan Ramanayaka Ranjan Ramanayaka who spoke the truth on behalf of the country is in prison today we are currently working on removing this government from power and then to release Ranjan The international community will surely do something against this injustice Ranjan is doing quite all right now we will continue our fight on his behalf We brought this to the attention of the international community about the unavailability of an appealing process in regard to the court decision the IPU and the UNHRC will see to this Meanwhile while several civil organizations staged a demonstration opposite the Velikada prison demanding for the release of Ranjan Ramanayaka they also celebrated his birthday opposite the prison today and that's a wrap of primetime news on TV1 for tonight i'm Charlene Benedict for the news first team along with our sign language interpreter for tonight Brian Dekou take care Thank you.